welcome to our final episode of the semester. I'm Karina Rodriguez. And I'm Nicole Rivera, and here are this week's top stories. On April 30th, Kai Caparo held their 54th annual Virginia M. Parker fashion show themed Fashion Through the Decades. Students walked in different period three themed outfits going from the 1920s to the present day. There were student performances and even an Elvis impersonator. The event raised money for the Virginia M. Parker Scholarship, which is awarded to an undergraduate woman with financial need. The recipient is not affiliated with the organization, but must demonstrate university or community involvement. Gerber Quad came alive yesterday as students gathered for Charlie's Boardwalk Bash. The weather caused some attraction cancellations, but Charlie was still in attendance for games, music, and food. If you missed out on yesterday's fun, don't worry. Today in the Bayer parking lot, the university will be celebrating its 99th anniversary. Students can purchase food from local food trucks, participate in raffles, or play lawn games. The event ends at 3.30 p.m. Rain location is set for the Beckerman Recreation Center. We now turn to Anna Downs, who sat down for an exclusive interview with President Kaplan. I am joined today by President Kaplan for an exclusive interview about how this year has gone and his plans for the future. So good morning, President Kaplan. Good Thank morning. you for being here. I'm glad to be here. Great. So let's begin with um, just if you can provide some updates on the Bergami innovation space and if there is an end date in sight. There's absolutely an end date in sight. Well, yes. Yeah. So let. So when is that? If you walk by the building, as I did, I think yesterday, mm -hmm. it's almost fully enclosed. Yes. Glass is going up. Yes. The brick and siding are going mm -hmm. up, and they'll soon be working on the interior. They're totally on schedule. Great. And it will open in January, and we'll have classes in there. Wow. For the spring That's semester. That's very exciting. Yeah, wow. it is. Wow. I can't wait to see everything as it comes together even more. Um, also, on the note of construction, are there any updates regarding what the university is planning on doing with the space purchased from St. Paul's Church? We haven't closed on it yet. Oh, really? But okay. the offer's in and it's been accepted and we're just going through all of the legal steps mm -hmm. and we'll be closing, I would guess, by sometime in the summer. Okay. We start today's update women's lacrosse, who wrapped up the regular season at 9-4, and four, earning the sixth seed in the Northeast 10 Conference playoffs. The team took to the field at Pace University last night for the quarterfinal round of the tournament and pulled off a thrilling upset on the three-seeded setters, winning in overtime 13-12. Senior Mackenzie Ray won it for the Chargers, completing her hat trick and sending New Haven into the semifinal round. The team will head to Syracuse, New York this weekend where they will take on the seven-seed Merrimack, who knocked off number two, the number two seed in the tournament and in the nation at Delphi yesterday, 18-16. With a win, the Chargers would advance to the conference championship, looking for the second conference championship since joining the NE10 in 2009. Softball swept the doubleheader at Caldwell last week to finish the regular season with an impressive 30 wins on the year. They ended an in-conference record of 23-6, earning them the two-seed in the Southwest Division and a bye to the quarterfinal round. They'll take the field at host St. Anselm College this afternoon in the first of two quarterfinal games on the day playing Merrimack, the four seed in the Northeast Division, with the winner going on to play the host Hawks Friday for a spot in the NE10 title game on Saturday. First pitch in all three potential games for the Chargers are set for 12 p.m. And finally, baseball dropped a 5-4 decision to Southern Connecticut State on Tuesday, moving the winless streak to 11 games, now the longest losing streak in program history. They broke the streak Monday with a 5-5 draw to eighth seed in the country, the Adelphi Panthers, but are winless again in their last 11. The team will wrap up the regular season this weekend with a three-game series at St. Rose. First pitch for the doubleheader Saturday and single game Sunday are both set for 12 p.m. The Chargers have two more shots at a title this year. Let's hope lacrosse and softball can bring home the trophy. Tune into the charge up on Monday to see if they pulled out the victory. That concludes our final episode of the Charger Bulletin News. As always, thank you for tuning in. As a reminder, for the full interview of President Kaplan, check out thechargerbulletin.com. And be sure to pick up a copy of our last print edition of the year, which will hit newsstands on May 7th. I'm Ethan Cardona. I'm Corina Rodriguez. And I'm Nicole Rivera. We'll see you next semester. Hi, everyone. I'm Kiana Quinones, Managing Editor of the Charger Bulletin and Producer of Charger Bulletin News. And I'm Karina Kroll, Editor-in-Chief of the Charger Bulletin. The end of the semester is finally here, and at our last episode, we wanted to take the time to introduce you to the two people who will be the face of the Charger Bulletin franchise. 
Introducing our new editor-in-chief, Anna Downs, and our managing editor, Karina Rodriguez. We're looking forward to seeing what you guys can do. Thank you so much. I'm so thankful for this opportunity, and I'm really looking forward to my time in the position. I'm looking forward to seeing how we can continue the Treasure Bulletin success and grow, make it grow even more. We look forward to providing a fair and balanced journalism to the University of New Haven, but we need your help. We are always looking for individuals who are interested in shooting and editing video, studio production, and being on camera for our Charger Bulletin news broadcast. In addition to our award-winning campus newspaper, the Charger Bulletin are looking for writers, copy editors, and photographers. You don't need to be a communication or journalism major to join. Go to chargerbulletin.com and click the contact button on the top left part of the screen to get involved. Have a great summer and we'll see you next semester.